Writing in Renewable Energy Focus, Matt Lovell recently highlighted that serious questions still remain unanswered about the UK's energy strategy and that clarity is urgently needed. It's clear that with uncertainty increasing and a number of the UK's gas, coal, nuclear and oil power stations now approaching end of life, the market urgently needs clarity. Central to any strategy will have to be a pivot around green energy. Global warming and climate change are two massive world issues and a big change to our behaviour regarding power generation and consumption is well overdue. But what are our options and plans regarding long-term power generation? By 2020, the UK and many other EU countries have agreed to use renewable energy to generate at least 20% of all their electricity. The increasing rise in wind generation has resulted in debate about wind farms themselves, with critics often labelling them eyesores and a threat to the environment. The acceleration and improvement of large-scale solar plants may further intensify the pressure on wind energy, but recent unexpected government changes in financial support may challenge this going forward. Since 2010, the UK has been a net importer of electricity mainly from France, the Netherlands and Ireland. Net imports have remained largely unchanged over the last few years, equating to 4.9 terawatt hours or 5.2% of the total electricity usage. By 2020, it's possible that we could be importing as much as 12 gigawatts of electricity, which does not create a solution which is cost effective for anything other than managing peak demand. A wider issue is the combined loss of coal and nuclear plant capacity over the next 10 years. In total, eight nuclear reactors are due to be decommissioned by 2025, according to a total of 14 gigawatts of capacity. So what direction could and should our electricity generation strategy take? Nuclear generation capacity in the aftermath of the events in Japan has slowed significantly around the globe. This has been compounded further by the economic and financial risks required to build, run and decommission further nuclear power stations. As I've discussed in the past, financing nuclear power in and amongst itself need not be a bottomless pit. A number of Asian stations have been built on time, on budget and at significantly less sums than those mentioned with the new European plants. Whilst there are economies of scale at play, Western designs are often bespoke which causes costs to balloon. There is broad consensus that fossil fuel generation as a whole will continue to decline, but in the short term it's hard to escape the view that an ageing fleet will either need to be replaced or kept running. Renewable generation shifts the merit order, but cannot be relied upon during the cold months of the year, and thus in lieu of large-scale capital investment, I find it hard to look beyond the repeated series of capacity auctions, mechanisms and short-term fixes. Assuming a challenging landscape, existing assets will continue to make up the bulk of the generation mix. Focus should therefore be placed on opportunities to increase the efficiencies of these existing assets in the short term and reducing transmission losses across the network as a whole. The same logic can and should be accelerated to our own homes to make them more efficient and self-sufficient. Reducing domestic peak load demands will reduce the scale of the central generation investment required and achieve carbon reduction targets, but this will only work with the correct central legislation and support. In the US, the development of shale gas power plants has accelerated enormously over the last five years as recent discoveries of gas reserves have challenged the significant legacy of oil and coal fired power plants. The UK has not experienced the same level of transformation and fracking still has to gain widespread public support, but the impact of a growing global gas market should not be discounted from any future scenarios. Gas fire power generation for short term capacity replacement will be good for another 40 years and should be built with CHP, but for the longer term we need to invest in technologies to store electricity more efficiently. Another area to explore is hydropower. While there are obvious environmental issues to consider, it has the potential, alongside other biomass generation technologies, to balance out our reliance on wind and solar. Over the next 20 years, the true costs and scale of decommissioning our existing nuclear fleet will become more clearly understood, which may alter our desire to build more nuclear stations. What is clear, however, is there remains a lack of leadership and decision making in regards to our short and long term power generation strategies. If ever there was a time for some real clarity from government, it has to be now.